Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm your host, Greg Williams, joined by our co-host, Adia Worcester from Kentucky Right to Life on this, uh, the eve uh, of this election day, the day after the election. And I want to remind you as we start that our mission and vision at Love and Lordship is every life and relationship built on the love and lordship of Jesus Christ. And boy, we could certainly use that. And I pray that we're all looking toward that. Adia, thanks for joining us. And as you welcome, then go right into your prayers. You usually do. Yes, yes. And again, I just begin with, you know, as we begin with, with just Psalm 33, 12, you know, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chooses for his inheritance. And as we think about this election, I wanted to, I don't think it's a poem, it's a prayer, it's a reflection, but, you know, all of those that run for office, all of those candidates, all of us, uh, this takes nothing away from fatherhood, but we all begin with a mom. And so uh, I just wanted to remind us of that in this in this sort of prayer thought tonight. And we pray for mothers. We pray that for the mothers of, for all mothers, for all women. But we remember that it's the most important person on earth is mother. She cannot claim the honor of having built Notre Dame Cathedral. She need not. She has built something more magnificent than any cathedral, a dwelling for an immortal soul the tiny perfection of her baby's body. The angels have not been blessed with such a grace. They cannot share God's creative miracle to bring a new saint into heaven. Only a human mother can. Mothers are closer to God, the creator, than any other creature. God joins forces with mothers in performing this act of creation. What on God's good earth is more glorious than this? to be a mother. Lord, we thank you for mothers and we ask you to bless the women who are listening today, whether they are mothers, grandmothers or not mothers, inspire their hearts because their hearts lead and form us. We ask all this in your name, sweet name, Jesus. Amen. 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 And I, and I echo that in this regard, Adia, you know, I sent it out to you and many others uh, last week, the day after we broadcast last week, we had our, and I'm being true to the the, the life yeah. of, of, that God gives. We had uh, our third, the first two were miscarriages and are waiting us in heaven, we know. Uh, but we got the first one we were able to hold, little Gwendolyn Elizabeth Williams. And oh my goodness, it was a joy and incredible to see her and get to see her or pictures of her every day. So I just echo all of that and say this, and then I want you, you to take off. 866 <laughs> days since Roe v. Wade was overturned. 821 days since the last legal abortion in Kentucky. And praise the Lord, no more countdown to the election. It's over. It ended yesterday. Whatever happened, yes. we know God's in control. Talk to us about that. Well, and I think that's, you know, you and I spoke earlier. And as we talk to our listeners and we're on the air, to, you know, God is sovereign. And we have to remember that no matter whether it's a, the, a local race, the state rep, a Senate race, the race for the president of the United States. God is sovereign yes. and we can never lose that focus. And sometimes with all the battle going on and, and, and battling for elections and the ads up and the money spent, the money spent and the power of that dollar coming in, the money spent, you know, there were 10 um, abortion or life issues on ballots across the state. We're still trying to collect across the, the different states, right? Yes. Across the, the across right. different states. Right. Florida's was, uh, they, we won, let's say they defeated it. We, yes. They would have needed 60% in Florida. So it won. They didn't have the 60%. Otherwise that would have been the most abortion friendly state in the country. People would have flocked there. They would have taken abortion vacations and then went to the beach afterwards. Oh. So they were, they had beat that one down. We're waiting to get the even to see all the results, but also in seeing that to digest the amount of money that was spent on the this issue and why it's you know it is this I, I wrote a couple of weeks ago about the war on women the war on motherhood the war on children mm -hmm. and so much of that this election cycle we heard was was built around that on every race you know our our races here in Kentucky yes. and we had some uh, great victories but you know even the last few days uh, there was over almost 250, 300,000 spent thrown into a race that uh, Representative Nancy Tate, Mead, uh, Mead Breckenridge area county, was, you know, of course, looked like she would win that handily uh, in her district. And she did. She did. Yes. Right. Right. And she did. 
But at the last minute, you know, the money and the attacks, and they were all attacking her because of her, her stand for education, on children's education, on um, marriage, on uh, right. sexuality, Absolutely. and on life. Yeah. Uh, unnecessarily. I mean, it was just, it was almost just an attack on this issue. Well, you, you make a great point there and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because, but that's one of the main reasons that we wanted to see amendment Two pass. It didn't, uh, there was a lot of deception, uh, that was put out there about what would actually happen with it. And that, that unfortunately won the day, but it literally, one of the reasons we want that educational freedom, because so much of what is mandated by the government and pushed through public schools is anti-biblical. It's anti-life. Yes. It's anti-marriage. There's so much of that. And so I hope that people will awaken to that as we continue that battle. But there was a lot of confusion, even up until the last minute, people Absolutely. calling and saying, a, a lady called me well, on Sunday. I was in my Sunday school class and people are, still don't understand it. And that's when I finally said, can you just ask them to trust you? Would you, would you tell them wrong? I mean, the people that are saying this, but that's, that's that money spent and the money churns confusion, you know? And uh, yeah, so yeah. you know, the elections are what they are. The, you know, right, we right, move right. forward because God is sovereign and that's what we have to um, remind ourselves. And it also reminds us how much work we have to do within ourselves within our family, within our communities. You know, that's that's the ministry. That's what you and I do, Greg. And and that's what this show is about. Ministering to the, the men and the women. <laughs> you yes. know, it's Wednesdays for women <laughs> yeah. who will listen to the show and, and and talk about the issues that are important. I do want to, as we go forward in the future, talk about why is there such a war on women? And why is there such from it's biblical to do from the moment in the garden to confuse and deceive our culture through women. Yeah. And we see that in, you know, here we go all, you know, all these years forward in our, in our modern culture where we are millions of dollars were funneled in on campaigns and balloted issues um, to normalize uh, taking the life of a child. And that's really when we, when we do talk about the life issue, uh, I said, we, we forget to say the people are seeking the right to kill. Mm. That's exactly we've, right. We've said and there is no body. right for that, but that's what they call it. The right to an abortion is the right to stop. Right to kill. Heart. But we we have no right like that. You no. know, even that in any other uh, aspect, a constitutional right, the Constitution doesn't give us the a right in any other area to enslave, to kill, or to cause harm to another human being. Right. Right. And so these battles will continue, but it's really a battle of changing hearts. We fight for their lives. So, as, which is, as, yes, which is again why education is so important. Yes, as long as the government is on that side and standing for that and pushing that through the school system, we're going to continue to have to battle this, and we and be many people be deceived because they're not listening. Honestly, they're not listening and following the word of God. And I'll I'll talk with anybody about that. I'll do as graciously as I can, but I'll talk to anybody about that. That, about marriage, about male and female, all of those are biblical foundations and our education, our media, and our government have twisted that and deceived people. And many so-called Christians are believing the lies. Well, and they do. And, 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 the, and, and these false promises, you know, uh, and I won't belabor this, but I ran into a, a young woman. I was checking out the store and she said, uh, Oh, just, just something about work. And I said, well, it's great to have a job, you know, in this economy. And she said, yes, but she said, you know, it's just unfair um, to have to work. And I said, well, how, what else would we do if we didn't, you know, we didn't work. And I, and she said, well, to uh, have to work to support a family of, of five. And I said, oh my goodness, are you the only person working? And she said, well, I believe that, you know, we should work if we want to, because it should be fun. And we should all be given X amount, you know, so much money. Everyone should get a fair amount of money. And I said, well, that would kind of be socialism or more. <laughs> yeah. And she looked at me like she had never, and that concerns me with education, right? There you go. There had you never go. heard that before, right. that concept. She says, right. well, I'm talking more like the Jetsons. And she says, and then if you want to work, you should be able to work in something that's fun. Yeah. And I said, oh my goodness, are you, do you have four children or your, your husband have three children? And she said, no, um, we just have, I, I'm, I'm an adult. She's 30 some years old and she has, she and her husband and her mother and father. 
and she's the only one that's working. And it, but it was this concept that working is yeah. something we shouldn't have to do. The government and, should support us. And, and it should be fun, right? That, that, yes. That's the outcome of what has been taught that is antithetical, again, to work is a, it is a toil. We will have to labor at it. Yes. It's also a blessing, not a blessing in terms of, I want it to all be fun. And I hope people can find something they enjoy doing, as Solomon said in, in uh, Ecclesiastes, that to work and enjoy your work and, and to be blessed in it is, is a good thing, Right. And that's what we should get, but not in the sense of what she's saying. Well, if I don't want to, I should be get paid by the government. That is a disaster. I walked out kind of shaking my hands and I said, God bless you. I will pray for you. You know, I, it must be difficult supporting four other people and uh, I will keep you in my prayers. And she just yeah. kind of looked at me and thought, well, I probably why is this lady praying for me as she leaves the store? But <laughs> I just, you know, it struck me what has happened again. It's a reminder. I, a tangible reminder of what has happened in our education system and what's happened in our culture and how our culture, you know, just has become so confused. But you know why, Adia, that that is so prevalent? Because it is so easy to convince our own selfish desire and flesh that that's the way it ought to be. Yes. We're easily deceived into that because it's what we would like to have. Unfortunately, it's not the way it is in a fallen world. And Christ is the only one that can redeem that. And as he does that, we have to go back to his truth and go, but these are the truths, and this is how we live by it. it we fail to do that in many of our churches. We fail to do that, and not only education, but media, and there again, government is pushing all of this because it appeals to people in their flesh. That's why they seem to win all of that. But when, let's close. We're going to close here in the last couple of minutes with some thoughts as to the fact that we've said it several times, God is sovereign, still and all. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And his graciousness and he is mighty and he is sovereign and he has not abandoned us. Even if we don't right. like the outcomes of an election or we, right. or we're glorified in them, you know what I'm saying? And we're happy. He, he walks with us through this. Sometimes it seems like dark times and sometimes yes. it seems like prosperous times. And it is uh, because he is faithful. We may be getting what we know in God's words, we are getting exactly what we deserve. Now it might not be, Good. We may have wanted something else, but when we look around at many of the things that we have let go of or not held on to or done according to his word, we are getting exact. He's faithful. He's giving us exactly Amen. what we deserve Amen. so we can look to him to make the best of it as the Israelites did in Babylon, or we can turn it around, but we need to seek him to do that. And yes. so I want to quote a couple and then get closing real quick, closing yes. thoughts. Got a minute left. Daniel 2.21 says this, He, God, causes the changes of the times and seasons, establishes kings and rulers, and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who understand. And then in Proverbs 21.1, a king's heart is channeled water in the hand of the Lord, just like the riverways. God directs it where he pleases. We can trust that. And so I pray that we will do that as Christ followers. Yes. Yes. Amen. And we, we just lift up in prayer, all of those who ran for office, all of those who have lost offices and all those who have won, that they will serve this, this kingdom here on earth with God's blessing. Yes. And with that, thank you for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Jesus Christ. Uh, you're listening to Greg Williams as host, Adia Wishner as co-host to the authority of love.